Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, I'm going to explain all of the progress updates for the SWR120 since the last main update. I've worked on the engines, the interior, and the tail. So, let's get started. Since the last main update, the engines have basically been redone completely. So I've built them up from scratch, and then I've coded them again. I've explained all of this in the last two videos in this update. However, in my last video where I coded the engines, I couldn't finish them in time. But I finished them, or at least I've finished the coding part of it. The reason it took so long to finish these engines is because I was playing around with the smooth of the different stages. There are three smooth values, one for each of these stages. Well, actually, there's two per stage, so six total. First is where you apply air to get the engine spinning up, and then you can apply fuel to bring it up to idle, then you can have throttle. So that's the three stages. There's a minimum smooth and then a maximum smooth. I've explained all this in my previous video, which I'll link in the description. Basically I had to play around with those values and I ended up rewriting the entire smoothing code, like not the double smooth, but I rewrote the entire code that calculated the maximum smooth and the minimum smooth. So anyway, let's give it a start. The other thing I've added is windmilling. Wind milling is where, let's say the engine's off, but there's some wind. The N1 stage rotates in this wind. I left the N2 stage alone because it doesn't, you can't really see it. I don't think it actually spins up that much, but it probably doesn't at all. So I've just ignored the N2 from wind milling, but the N1 does wind mill. So if I apply some wind, you can see it starts to spin up. And also, let's say the wind is coming from behind the engine. The N2 can spin the other direction. But when you start the engine, so when you click the engine dial 2, or really turn the dial to start, the windmilling code will have a target of 0 now. But I've smoothed it so it doesn't instantly jump to 0, which, which would be, of course, unrealistic. So if I turn the engine 2 dial to 2, you can see the N2 is rising. And N1 because N2 is rising, now starts to spin in the opposite direction, and N2 is now at around 24%. This is not the final dial, this is just so I could see what it's like. So as that start, we can apply fuel, and you can see the engine is starting to spin up. N2 of course doesn't really rise that much because it's only going to idle. N2 is at 70%, and I'm going to hit max throttle, and you can see how N2 and N1 behave. So N1 rose about as fast as N2 did. It increased most of the way. The end smoothing is where it's, it slows down a bit in the rate of increase, but it spawns pretty quickly. Similar to the G90 in real life. Also, reverse thrust increases it to, I think it's like 91% and 2. It doesn't increase it all the way, I think it's like 70% or something, 90%. So, reverse thrust increases it somewhat, not all the way, but most of the way. And actually, that's the maximum value of reverse thrust. If I have the levers, you can actually frame any way you want. Reverse thrust is by keyboard, uses fire guns. That's the small planes input it uses. So, my space bow that creates reverse thrust which only has false and true for the fire guns, which is the input it uses, as I just said. But there is a lever where you can drag that, but that's not in this test engine file, which is not the force the main file. So that's that. So this engine is basically done coding-wise. The only thing I need to figure out is the shutdown behavior, because if I shut it down, which is going to start by adding no fuel, or taking it out, disabling fuel input or something, N2 decreases, and so it's N1. N1, I think, decreases at a suitable rate, but this rate is the same even if it's at maximum power, which is a little unrealistic because it'll take too long to slow down. And N2 does decrease relatively quickly, but I think this could be a little faster. 
That shouldn't take too much time, but I'm not going to do it in this video. So N2 is now 0. And N1 is slowly spinning down. And I'm just going to start the engine up again. I'm going to have fuel always on, so I can show you what I've done for the hot start, which I've also explained in my previous video. So watch the back of the engine here. So when N2 is between 10% and I think it's 21% and fuel is on, as well as exactly trying to start the engine and not, starting, like, and not stopping the engine, then a hot start will be simulated. This doesn't actually do anything like any damage or anything. All it really does is show that effect and also I might add some sound effects. I haven't done any sound effects with this engine. And also it consumes a little bit of fuel. Fuel consumption is entirely simulated using Funkitry, which is the programming language for simple planes. And I have a variable for this engine, which basically tells me how much fuel the engine is consuming. It really, it's a number which varies between 0 and I think it's a 1 or something. And I'll, I might add a multiplier or something to that value. So really I have a variable which I can simply modify to have the fuel consumption of the engine. And yeah, that's the engine. So here we have the interior. I don't remember what this looked like in the last video I made about this interior, but I've pretty much redone all of the windows. So this has a new technique of windows where it's instead of having the these like wall things in between the windows be uh, a square block which has been rotated to fit with the windows. I've actually sliced the main fuselage to have all these different parts, and then the windows are just a hollow fuselage which has been added in between these parts. So if I nudge a window out of the way. This is what it looks like with no window, like the, no fuselage. Like hollow fuselage window part. And the hollow fuselage has just enough thickness to cover all those different angles. And this looks much cleaner than the original windows. It does add a few more parts, but this isn't actually a problem because eventually the fuselage is going to be one part. Which I explain in the first video in the series. The doors are mostly the same, I've just raised the height of them because they're too short. They also have a window in the middle of them. That's really it for the doors. And also, I didn't actually mention this in part 1, which is where I talked about modding this plane, but I have this whole front interior part, which is one part, which has been entirely 3D modeled in an external program. If this wasn't made in simple planes, I modeled this and added it to the game. So this is the front gala section, the front bathroom doors. There's no actual bathroom because, I don't know, I'm just lazy. There's also this thing called, which I call ultimate class. So I realized some time ago the snows is actually too long to be realistic. So if you look at any picture of like a real life plane, the front doors will be close to the cockpit, like somewhere in here, but in this s 120 with all this front space. So I decided I was going to have like an ultimate class, which is like first class, but even better. Well, actually it probably is first class in some planes, but in this plane it's really ultimate class because first class is going to be just basically bigger seats. So you could think of it as first class, business class, and economy. I like to think of it as economy, first class, and ultimate class. In ultimate class, there were only four seats, so two seats per cabin. Each cabin has a bed for two, plenty of storage, and also a seat. There are no windows, but there are going to be soon. It's just another thing I have to do, which I'm going to do off camera. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that ultimate class section. The cockpit is technically an interior part, but I haven't really done anything on it since a while ago I've been focusing on things like the wings, the engines, and basically the parts around the exterior that I actually do need for the cockpit, because the engines have key variables for the cockpit screens, which I'll get to in a bit. Actually, I'll, I'll get to them very shortly, like now. I'm just going to finish the interior section. So there's the interior, windows, doors, there's also these cargo doors. The interior does feature cargo bays, but there's not going to be much in them. The doors can just open, that's it. I'm also going to put a small control panel here where you can like control the door and stuff. I also redid the wing box, or at least the front and back sections of it. I thought the original where I just had those two fuselages wasn't very realistic. It also looked a little weird. So I redid it. It has more parts, but again, this will be sold with my one part fuselage technique. And for the no mods version, I think the no mods version will have no windows or doors. Because this is alone, like almost a thousand parts. I also redid the rear section of the fuselage. This is based off of 787. The interior is going to be pretty detailed, like the seats. I'm going to have overhead compartments with things like, like lights, air conditioning, oxygen mask compartment, and that is going to be exclusively on the mods version because, well, the compartments are mods. So the cockpit screens, 
So this is obviously a very old fuselage section. Here you can see the actual wing box. These are like engines version 2. These are the modded variable wing mod wings. And this is an older version of the windows. So for the screens, this left screen here is going to be the final screen for the left. I'm going to add a few more things, but the, what's currently there is going to stay like that. Here is going to be a navigation screen, which is going to be fully functional, including things like waypoints, changing the range of it, and maybe other stuff that I haven't thought of yet. The main screen is the engine information screen. This map might stay or go, I'm not sure yet. But actually, it will stay because I can just export and add it back as a mod because I can do that now. And also the actual information about the engine. So, I think I will leave it like this. But of course the variables powering it are going to change a lot. And also the labels, because this says this says number 1 and number 2, and EGT. But I didn't understand what they actually measured from engines back when I made this. So I just put engine thrust and EGT. Now I'm going to have things like N1, N2, EGT, because that is a real measurement. It's called exhaust gas temperature. I think engine thrust 2, and engine oil temperature. I'm going to have a lot more than this. I think I did plan to have more than this, but this is just what I had when I made this. This is going to be a duplicate of the left screen. And the tail. So the horizontal stabilizers, I made these in my How to Make Custom Wings video. And I said I'd make the tail off camera, and I've done that now. Well, I haven't made the control surfaces yet, but I've made the base tail. I'm going to add a few more details to this, like the straight for you. I'm going to add have an inlet which is going to be somewhere around here. This is not going to be a fully hollow section, there's going to be towards the black fuselage here or something. And of course, I'm going to put a logo on the tail. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the snake air livery, or the SWL house colors livery, but I'll figure that out later. And that will be it for this video, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!